First question to start us off came from my guy John. He said, "Is this defense first and foremost? What up? How are you and the family? Congratulations on the addition to the family. I appreciate that, John." He said, "Now that the pleasantries are out the way, let's get to the meat and potatoes. Can this defense be considered the best defense of all time? If I'm not mistaken, it's the first defense in NFL history to be a triple crown leader. Now, best defense of all time." <sighs> It's really hard to say that. I can't say that. But it is insane. Absolutely crazy that the Baltimore Ravens did this because shout out to Ken McCusick, Film Study Ravens. Y'all follow him on Twitter and check out his podcast as well. He showed the past Ravens defenses uh, and he showed the sacks, the points per game and the takeaways and showed where they ranked in all three categories. So 2000, obviously the infamous Ravens defense in 2000 in sacks, they were ranked 22. They were 22nd in sacks. I mean, and then in points per game, they were ranked first. And in takeaways, they were ranked first. So they had two out of the three. Uh, in 2003, another great defense. They would rank first in sacks. Uh, but then points per game, they were sixth. And in takeaways, they were third. Uh, in 2006, the infamous Ravens defense that a lot of people put up there with 2000. Not right, but up there. In sacks, they were ranked second. In points per game, they were ranked first. And in takeaways, they were ranked first. So they got two out of the three. Uh, then 2008, I mean, uh, they were 11th in sacks. They were third in points per game, and they were first in takeaways. But regard anyway, going down to 2023, uh, the Baltimore Ravens were first in sacks. They were first in points per game, and they were first in takeaways. That is crazy. Because and, and, and you would think like even in, in, in 20, 2006, they were ranked second, first and first. But you would have thought for sure, like a previous Ravens defense, they got all three, right? They, 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 they got all three. They led in all three categories before, right? Nope, it's never been done. Never been done by the Baltimore Ravens, ever. And that's crazy because when you think of Baltimore Ravens, especially well before, before Lamar, and even early with Lamar, you think about defense. You think about defense so much. Obviously, with Lamar Jackson, he's changed a lot of the perception on the Baltimore Ravens, but you think so much about defense, and you would have been for sure, oh, yeah, Ravens, done, they done got all three. But no, no. So this is insane that the Baltimore Ravens, they, and not only that they did it, but they did it in the year 2023. Like, because y'all know, we, we know, like, offense is everything nowadays. It's everything. So for the Baltimore Ravens to be able to accomplish such a defensive feat in, in the football that we watch nowadays, that's amazing. But back to his question, he said, um, if I'm not mistaken, it is the first defense in NFL history to be a triple crown leader. Uh, we led the league in points allowed related to the league uh, and takeaways, and we led the league in sacks. I mean, everybody talks about the Bears defense, and then everybody talks about us as the Baltimore Ravens defense with Ray Lewis with our first Super Bowl. But this is, is this a sleeper team that should be held in that conversation. Uh, yes and no, no. No and yes. Uh, I had to put no first, but no and yes. Um no because like it's hard but, but no because like those defenses like those defenses but yes because they for the for again what I was saying earlier with how football is played nowadays and all the emphasis that's put on offense all the rules that favor the offense to for you to have a defense that does that in this day and that's crazy man that's really crazy, and we cannot take away anything from them. We cannot discredit them with all the, again, the penalties that go toward the offense, with all the stuff that the defensive players just cannot do nowadays. You can't even look at a quarterback the wrong way. You can't even sneeze on a quarterback. You cannot touch a wide receiver at all. You can't even breathe on a wide receiver. Else is going to be a penalty for this defense to do that in this day and age. That, that's amazing. And he said, if so, does that mean that the Baltimore Ravens are the best defensive organization ever to be assembled? Ooh, well, you asking some hard-hitting questions early on. Well, they, they definitely had a consistency. They have the consistency. And, again, that's what they were known for from jump is defense. So, and he said, but, but regardless on your opinion, the only thing that matters is let's finish the story. I love it. I love it. That's it. And then he said, scripted or not, I need to be able to go home to Baltimore and celebrate our third title. So, my guy, he trying to go to the parade. He already planning on going to the parade. I don't know what my wife, she asked me, she said, oh, if, if Raven win the Super Bowl, you going to go to the parade? I said, well, probably, but hey, we're going to see. But he said, hey, keep up the good work. This community definitely appreciates you and your work. Salute. Now, I appreciate you, John. And a nice way to start us off with question from subs. So, team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of Question from Subs. And this is where you can ask any NFL question you want to. And we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons. 
Shout out to our team, Keep It Clean patrons, because y'all are lovely. Y'all been holding it down, and I appreciate everything that y'all do in the background that helps this channel keep moving. Thank you. But if you're a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can send your message directly on Patreon. If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you don't have to. But if you would like to, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss anything. And leave a like on the video. Y'all been going crazy with it. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Because it helps the channel a ton. Now, um, next question. More so apology, which I appreciate. Came from my guy, Nyan. He said... Hey, Engraven, congrats again on the new little one. Hey, I appreciate that, Nine. Uh, he said, you have my full consent to use this video and audio to honor our deal. I had to edit the video link so it would send, but as a man of my word, I apologize for previous comments about hashtag JC24. So he's apologizing for his comments that he said about my guy Jadavian Clowney because I remember he said Jadavian Clowney ain't it. He said he ain't it. And I said, all right. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Everybody got their own opinion. I said, is it your opinion's wrong? But everybody got their own opinion. That's that's cool though. That's cool. But I told him like, hey, watch. I, I told him just watch, watch, watch my guy, man. And I said, make sure. I said, you got to issue a public apology when it's time. And here we go. Apologize for looking rough. I'm a working man. I work every single day. But I apologize to you. Team keep it clean and JC24 reason why you can't argue with that seven hundred fifty thousand dollar incentive you can't argue with the nine and a half sacks which is a career high and you cannot argue with the uh, career high quarterback pressure rate can't argue with it never been so happy to be wrong so he continued and said can't argue with his production this season and overall contribution to our squad and polarizing defense i've never been so happy to be wrong so again I apologize to you, Team Keep It Clean, and to Jadavian Clowney. Proud of the work he's done and to call him a Baltimore Raven. Now, as for the team, let's rest our bodies, stay focused on the task at hand, make it to February, one game at a time. I hope nothing but blessings continue to fall in line for you. Shout out to the greatest NFL outsider. <laughs> Appreciate you, tonight. All right, next questions came from my guy, Martin, who's been a patron for a long time now. So I appreciate you, man, for about two years almost. So thank you. He said, not going to lie, Richard Sherman's take on Lamar Jackson got me heated. I wanted to say things about his career, but I refrained from doing that. But, but, I mean, he had a good career, though. Super Bowl champion, played in three Super Bowls uh, with two different teams, two with the Seahawks, uh, one with the 49ers. Um, and he did his, like, he, was, he had a good career. So I don't think we can even talk bad about his career, but you said you wouldn't anyway, so that's cool. Anyway, he said, but what I will say is despite what he says, he's a hater. <laughs> he said, you can tell the day after the Ravens beat the 49ers, he was visibly mad and refused to admit Lamar won the MVP with that game. Uh, his numbers don't match, uh, he says, but doesn't look at why his numbers don't line up. Uh, he has as many total yards as any other quarterback, and the reason his touchdowns are so low is they are because Lamar gets the team down to the five, and they just hand the ball off to Gus. See, I've been appreciating that about the Ravens this year. Um, they ain't been doing the funny business. They ain't been getting cute. They ain't been getting all pretty. Once they get down to the goal line, they ain't been getting all fancy. Oh, let's do this. Blah, blah, blah. No, they've been straight up. Hey, Gus Edwards, here. Take it. Boom. Get the touchdown. Like, they've been so, like, straightforward, and I appreciate that so much. Because in years past, we would see them get down there. And they get all cute, they get all fancy and what, but this year, no. So, good point. He said, Ravens rushing touchdowns from running backs are 20. If you gave Lamar half of those, he'd be at almost 40 touchdowns. Example, during the Niners game, Lamar rushed all the way to the one-yard line, but then the next play, instead of letting Lamar get a touchdown, they just hand the ball off to Gus, which, in my opinion, is what you want to do anyways to avoid Lamar getting needlessly injured just to stat pad. But it's like you say, and I agree with the numbers don't tell the whole story with Lamar. That touchdown that Gus Edwards got doesn't tell the whole story of how Lamar got the team in position uh, to score that touchdown like he has all season. The first game of the season, go back and look at the game. If you just look at the numbers, you think Lamar had a terrible game, but he literally moved the ball at will on them running backs. Just The running backs just got all the touchdowns. So, yeah, that's important. It is, it's very important to – and I ain't going to sit up here and say, oh, hey, you need to watch film and da da da, da but watch the games. Because when you watch, and this is not just with Lamar Jackson, this is really with anybody. Because we could talk about numbers all day and, and all night. Uh, we could look at the stats all day and all night. But they just, they don't tell the whole story when it comes to anybody. But especially with Lamar Jackson, stats, they, they don't tell everything. You, you really got to watch to truly appreciate how great of a player he is and that he, what he's been. 
Uh, and he said, continuing, he said, also, look at the Bills versus the Patriots. Josh Allen had a terrible game. He scored two rushing touchdowns from the one-yard line. If you just looked at the box score, you would think that he did okay or good. And another reason I say Sherman is a hater, despite what he says, is because Skip asked Sherman, if Lamar five touchdown, three incompletions game against the number two seed in the AFC was enough to move him, he immediately responded with, no, not even uh, any hesitation. He didn't have to think about it. That tells me no matter what Lamar does in Sherman's mind, it isn't going to be good enough. And that's what makes him a hater. The fact that no matter what Lamar does, doesn't move the needle, makes him a hater. I'm sorry for the rant, but Lamar deserves MVP. Haters, go back and watch the games. You'll be proven wrong enough. Solid said rant over. Yeah, just watch. That's it. Just watch. But, yeah, um, that's something that we said back in 2018. So same thing that you just said just now. That no matter what Lamar Jackson does, for some people, it will never, ever, 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 ever be good enough. And, and with Martin Meeks continuing, he said, I got a lot, to, a lot of stuff to say in these upcoming weeks, but I don't want to jinx anything. So I'll hold off on the things I want to say about the Ravens. But today, I uh, just wanted to say thank you. Your video came at just the right time. Had to put my dog down, uh, who has been with us for 15 years. Oh, I'll be 30th on the 26th. So he's been with me with what feels like my whole life. Uh, he was more than a pet. He was family. Uh, your video helped take my mind away uh, for a little bit. Also wanted to say your channel has really helped change my opinion about other Ravens fans. Well, uh, first, uh, before we get into the Ravens fan part, um, sorry about your dog, man, because I know, um, yeah, we're well, having a dog. Yeah, you you are right. They are a thousand percent. Not like fa they are family uh, because the dogs, they're there when you get home. They're there to greet you. And I remember seeing something on social media a long time ago um, where it said that the only thing that a dog cares more about than themselves is their owner or their family. Um, so and that was real right there because and, and then when with a dog you see that. You see that how they treat you, how they just they just looking up at you, they just waiting to, to play with you, waiting for you to feed them, waiting for you to walk with them, to, to do all that stuff. So yeah, that that just that that, that makes a it made a really good point. So I I'm sorry about uh your dog, man. I know that that's that's really, really tough, man, but I, I appreciate you sharing that with us, man. So appreciate big big shout out to you, Martin. Um, he also said, uh, the videos helped change my opinions about other Ravens fans. I used to think we had the worst fan base because of how our own fans would disrespect our players like Flacco. I understand we're thinking we needed a new quarterback, but I just didn't like the disrespect. I remember in 2017, I went to my only Ravens game against the Lions. We whooped them. And after the game, I went to get an autograph from any player I could as they went to the players parking lot. Well, uh, there was... Any fans there shouting disrespect towards certain players like Michael Campanero? Yeah, you're getting cut this offseason, and I can't wait. Just because he didn't stop to sign. Uh, yeah, I, I, I hate stuff like that. And, it like, I think um I, I've heard a lot of Ravens fans say, oh, I feel like Ravens fans are the worst. But any fan base could say that because, unfortunately, um in any fan base, there are those fans who just – or disrespectful or rude or arrogant or cocky can be very, very nasty and just – just terrible to people because um, a lot of fans, they get entitled. They feel like, hey, I'm paying the good money for these tickets or this jersey or this memorabilia, whatever it might be. You need to, whether you need to sign something or you need to take this picture or you need to play better. Oh, my fantasy team, we lost because of you. And, and it's just like, mm, nah. But unfortunately, there's that toxicity in any fan base. Um, that's why I really felt like is important and, and I, i've had my share uh, of um just not being respectful uh to players i, I remember years ago years 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 and I, and I learned my lesson um so that's why we, we definitely stopped doing it but I, I just used to get on kenneth dixon big time man i, I really did over and over and over man i just used to call him injury prone and say this and that and just but and and again it's, it always stuck with me how he responded because he had hit me up on Twitter, sent me a DM and said, hey, I watch all the videos that you talked about me. I watch all of them. Um, but then he talked. He, and he, and he, but we had a little conversation in there and he didn't get disrespectful, didn't lash out at me, no, nothing. And I'm like, man, like I made so many videos talking bad about this guy saying this, that and a third. And his response to me was with nothing but respect. And I was just like that that right there like really changed my whole mindset on that and I'm like, man, like these guys that's why I always say like these these players, they're people too. They're not just players, they're not robots, they're they're people, they're their fathers, their brothers, their uncles, their cousins, their sons, their friends, their 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 family, their their all of that stuff, man. So it's important um to watch how we speak about them. 
And that's why I never like hearing people say, I don't say, oh, this guy sucks. He's terrible. Oh, man, he's the worst. No, these guys are NFL players, man. They got a bad game, they got a bad game. They had an off game, they got an off game. Okay. That don't mean they suck, they terrible. They're, they're, no, no. So, yeah, I appreciate you uh, bringing that up. And he also said, uh, along with issuing death threats to players like Lee Evans and Billy Cundiff, that really soured my opinion of other fans. But after years of reading comments on this channel and countless videos, I see that there are more positive Ravens fans than bad ones. The bad ones are really just loud and obnoxious. But I want to thank Team Keep It Clean. Y'all are amazing people, really. Oh, wow. That, that's, that's special, man. That, that's, that's really, really special. And that is, um, again, that, that was very important uh, for me um, just with this channel with questions from subscribers with uh just everything this is how we operate on here it's very important for me to um just to try to show the good uh because things can be very frustrating we can all get very very frustrated uh at these baltimore ravens and just football in general because we want things to go a certain way we want things to be a certain way we want the team to have a certain level of success and this and that and the third but when they don't, it can be frustrating, but I, I think it's important, even when we're frustrated, even when things are going rough, um, to still maintain a level of respect at the beginning and end of the day. Lamar Jackson, Hall of Fame. Next question came from my guy, Jay. He said, my God, blessings to you, your wife, and Carter for the impending birth of your next child. I appreciate that, man. I'm very happy for your family, and I'm hoping to have the same news this year. Oh, oh okay, now. <laughs> you know what you got to do. Anyway, he said, happy, happy New Year to you and the rest of the team. Keep it clean, family. With all of that being said, is Lamar already on his way to Canton? Three games with a perfect pass rating, over 70% win rate, two Pro Bowls, two soon-to-be MVPs, uh, one All-Pro, soon to be two, numerous NFL records, and two division titles. Lamar has been a one-of-one one in his short career, but when you lay all of that out, all his accomplishments, is he already worthy of the Hall of Fame? A Lombardi and a Super Bowl MVP would make it a slam dunk, but I think he's already punched his ticket. What do you think? Now, you know what's funny? Before, somebody asked that question, oh, do you think Lamar Jackson is in the Hall of Fame? And I was like, no, 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 no not yet. No, you got to retire first, but then when I was talking to my guy, Quincy, shout out to uh, Quincy Carrier, uh, who does the the literally the best Browns YouTube channel that there ever has been. Shout out to my guy, Quincy, but um, he was talking about it, because we were talking offline, and he was like, yeah, uh, he said, Lamar's already in the Hall of Fame, because if you get two MVPs, like, he talked about it, everybody, every quarter player, excuse me, that has two MVPs, at least two MVPs, they're all in the Hall of Fame. And if they're not there yet, they will be there. Like Tom Brady, he'll obviously be, be there. But Aaron Rodgers, he will obviously be there. He ain't retired yet, uh, but he'll be there. But Peyton Manning, um, oh, now I'm trying to blank for all those guys who got both. Uh, it's Steve Young, I think he was on that list. But everybody who was on that list, all of them are in the Hall of Fame. So I was like, oh, whoa, that is uh, something. And, you're not, and, and with Lamar, one of those MVPs, is unanimous i don't think this mvp if he gets it i don't think it'll be unanimous uh but it will still be the mvp nonetheless so with and hey, you talked about the, the perfect passer rating games and whatnot and just he's amazing man um so yeah i, I do think that he really could be well on his way to the hall of fame for real man now it's gonna take some more but i mean Will it? Obviously, he, I mean, he's still going to keep playing. So he can just continue to add to everything. And the win percentage, what you talked about, that's big, too. It really is, man. So Lamar's been doing some crazy stuff. And we, we joke about it. But it's like with Lamar, like, it seems like every other game that Lamar Jackson is playing in, he's breaking another record. Every other game. And, and then you think about, too, like, man, his career could have been even better. But he missed the end of 2022 and missed the end of 2021. Had he not missed those, then, ooh, man. <laughs> Who knows, man? Next question came from my guy, Ace. He said, Angraven, I wanted to congratulate you and your wife on your upcoming arrival of a new Ravens fan. Yeah, as, as long as we steer him in the right direction. Because, you know, Carter, Carter be saying that he likes the Dolphins. And, I, I mean, you get it. You, you, you hear Miami and whatnot and... But he he loves Lamar Jackson. Every time you see Lamar Jackson on TV, he's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I know him. That's my friend." I say, like, "Oh yeah, it is, man. He knows you too." But um, yeah, I gotta I gotta have some conversations with Carter. But with our, our, our future child, we're gonna try to steer him in the right direction from jump. But I appreciate you. He oh excuse me, hey, he's my voice starting on it. He said my wife and I 
and I are expecting our fourth child at the end of March. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> y'all ain't playing. <laughs> so congrats to you. Oh yeah, yeah, you ain't messing around. So hey, good good stuff, man. Good 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 stuff, man. Uh he said, although I don't communicate with you regularly, I do watch your channel every day and I appreciate the work uh, that you do. No, nah, you you're good, man. I see you in the comments of every single live stream. So I, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. And and you've been around for a long, 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 long time. So I, I appreciate you uh sticking it out with us, man. Um he said, I have a question about the Raven strategy. For resting their starters uh, in this past week 18 and still maintaining their sharpness for the divisional game. What changes do they need to make from their approach in <coughs> 2019? Um, I would just say their mindset. Again, we, we weren't there in the locker room with them, so we don't know how their mindset was. But just remaining focused and, and, and just really knowing the task at hand, I think 2019 would help with that, with their approach to this year, with resting the starters and them having that extra, extra time off i think that um their focus should be a lot sharper uh the 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 presence that they have in the locker room it's a lot more because in 2019 lamar's super young that's his first year starting uh his first four years starting but you had mark ingram nice locker room leader uh you had who else calais came no calais came it wasn't there in 2019 um who else did you have besides mark Ingram? yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marcus Peters. Boy, he had some hot heads for it. And hey, them hot heads were ballers now. But um But now, like, and I'm I'm sure I'm missing some people too. I mean Marlon Humphrey was there. He was a lot younger than he is now. But um and I don't think he was the like leader leader. He probably like a semi leader, but now like guys are more mature. You got a Roquan Smith, you got a completely different Lamar Jackson, you got an Odell Beckham Jr. Um, you got a Nelson Aguilar, you 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 got uh, a different Marlon Humphrey, um, you got a Jadavian, you got Kyle Vanoy, you got a lot of guys with a lot of experience in a lot of different places, you got a lot of different Super Bowl champions on the team, you have guys that have been there and done that and, and, and have just, the, the experience is big. Just having that knowledge there and having that leadership there. You, when you watched um, different clips from Wyatt and stuff, uh, you could just hear the maturity and different guys, um, how guys are willing to do whatever for each other and not just themselves. And not, not that they were doing that in 2019, not, or not that they weren't doing that in 2019, but I remember um, Patrick Queen, there was a play, I forgot what team it was against, where Matt BK got a sack, but people were like, oh man, Patrick Queen, he had a sack. He, what were you doing on this play, Patrick Queen? Because the, the gap opened up, Patrick Queen shot right through it, but he ended up going away from the quarterback, and people were like, what are you doing? But Patrick Queen said, no, that was the play design because I was trying to get Matt BK to sack. So I'm like, oh. Then I remember there was a clip of Jadavian Clowney. Was, oh, it was something that he was talking about with somebody else. And, but it's just really guys just looking out for one another. So I just you, you see that so much with this Baltimore Ravens team this year. And you know they, they got everything that they need to, to make it happen. They, they, they really do. Um, but they, they are so much more mature than that team was back then and, and they have been laser focused so i just think just remaining focused staying focused uh just not feeling like you the big shot remaining having that underdog mentality and whatnot that they continue to have and that they don't want they want people to pick against them they don't want to be looked at as a top dog even though you are the top dog but just knowing that what you've done already it's not good enough, and you still got a little bit of ways to go. I can't say a long ways, but, I mean, it is a long way. You got three more games, three more games, divisional, AFC Championship, Super Bowl, and the goal, the goal is not to get to a Super Bowl. It's to win one. 